We are here. We are still flowing in, flowing in, but we are here. We are filling the conduit's heart so that you may receive our energy. Open your hearts, open your hearts that may, we may flow in through and to you, our dear friends. And of course, open, receive, receive. For many of you will also have private messages that will be gifts for you from your personal librarian and their team of helpers. Hmm. We are we are very happy to be here with you tonight. Greetings, greetings, greetings to all of you. Hmm. And the conduit has been most severe with her insistence that we do not overstay our welcome tonight. So we will get to the point, to the point, which is, hmm, hmm. of course, many of you are concerned what is happening to our planet. What will happen to the planet? Will the planet be destroyed? And of course, no, your planet will not be destroyed. Life upon the planet may have a bit of a difficult time, but the planet itself, of course, will not be destroyed. It is quite sturdy. It has already been through quite a lot and it is still here. So, mm, you know, a little uppity race of humanity will not be the destruction of this noble planet. Of course, you are not the destroyers of the planet, you are the healers of the planet. So you worry, you worry, how can I heal the planet? It is very kind of you. And of course, many of you are quite advanced souls with much skill and knowledge. You may not realize it, for you may have a life that is hmm, shut to your many capabilities. But we promise each of you does have such strong abilities beyond your understanding. So how do you connect with your abilities and with Earth's abilities? For of course, you are like children trying to soothe the ancient wise one. You need only ask the ancient wise one, how can we help for the ancient wise one has all the answers already. Your planet already knows what it needs and how to claim it. But your planet has no mouth to speak to you. Your planet may communicate with you in other ways. Visions, understandings, mandalas, many grids and networks and energy. Speaking with animals or just epiphanies that flow into you that help redirect your understanding of self and awareness. But your planet has no mouth. So you must speak to your planet in the ways of the wisdom that your planet speaks. We have talked many times with you about the importance of breathing with trees, meditating with trees, joining with trees, for trees are a great watch over, a great caretaker of your planet. 
and also the crystals, the rocks. We tell you the stones and the trees, and by stones we mean all rocks and crystals, and by trees we mean truly all plants, but the trees are the ones who watch over the other plants. The trees and the rocks are siblings. They are one together in harmony. And when you learn to communicate with them, then you learn the great mysteries of your planet and the wisdom of your planet. Learning to heal your planet becomes quite obvious when you receive the knowledge from the stones and the plants. Imagine how long ago, when your planet was young, it was not so solid as it is now. It was debris, then it was very gassy, and then it was molten fire and magma, eventually, eventually cooling, 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 and became crusty. And eventually, as the gases flowed up and the water flowed out over time, slowly with the volcanic eruptions and the plate tectonics and the moisture and the oxygen over millenniums and millenniums and millenniums and rise and falls of great beasts and species, your planet became much of rock and soil and water and air and plants. Every rock that you see was grown from the original womb of the days when your planet was a gassy, hot, fiery creature. There is no rock other than meteors, of course, that is not born from this. Either the rocks flow up as molten lava or they are birthed through the pressure and the elements within the Earth's deep ground and then the plate tectonics move them upward through the soil. Every rock that you meet today was originally birthed when your planet was birthed. Every rock has within it the ancient wisdom, or it knows how to connect to the mandalas of ancient wisdom. As the rocks move and grow and move, they erode and become bits of sand and soil. And as the life became and the plants grew and grew, and then they collapsed and died and decayed and became parts of the soil. The very soil, the more the plants grew and collapsed, the very soil that allowed the tectonics to open with grace so that the rocks may flow along their pathways, their life paths. So you see all of the soil that you have on your planet is from decayed stone or decayed trees, plants, or decayed flesh. Predominantly, decayed stone and plant. As the stones grow and evolve, 
and they decay and become soil, the plants, especially the trees, are grown from this and it becomes part of their life blood. And then they decay and return to earth. So you understand the trees and the rocks are siblings. The rocks are the older siblings for they were forming before there was enough moisture and the like to create the plant life on your planet. But they are the siblings. We hope we are clear with this. So when you connect with the plants, with the trees, with the stones, be it the crystals or the granites or the magmas. When you connect with them, you are connecting with the ancient wisdom of your planet. When you go into the ground and dig your fingers through the soil, you are touching what once was rocks and plants and the animals that have now become a part of Earth. Every dinosaur, every ancient being, every tree and plant that was once alive has returned to Earth. And great boulders rising up through, creating great cliffs, then crumble with little pebbles rolling down. You could pick up the smallest pebble and feel within it that it is from a great mountain. Perhaps a mountain that is not even in existence anymore. So remember the wisdom of your once healthy planet is here within these plants and these stones. You need only to connect with them and learn their songs, learn their lessons, feel their mandalas, as you feel their mandalas, you will feel also the animals that are connected with them. The stone in the water will have a different unique mandala to the stone on a mountain top or in an arid area, just as a pine tree and an orchid will have different mandalas of natural power connection. Of course, they are all connected together, but it is like a symphony. You spend time with the flutes, time with the cellos, time with the drums. Each has a unique resonance, but when they are together, they create the beautiful majesty of your lovely planet. If you wish to heal your planet, remember, connect with the power of your planet when it was once very healthy and help to revive this resonance, this frequency, let it flow into you and through you to all that you meet. Hmm. For many of you, you are still students of planetary healing. Do not feel that your lessons must be immediately implemented and effective, for this would be exhausting for you. You are in 
a fairly novice level for this concept, no matter how advanced you may be in others. Explore the beauty, allow the trees and the stones to be one with you, share their wisdom. When you ask an ancient tree, share with me the stories of your youth or you ask any tree, share with me the stories of your forest, of your grandparents' time. Share with me the stories of this forest in the ancient times. You will receive some wonderful, powerful lessons. We do promise you that humanity will succeed in returning to the path of healing. You will find your way. Just as with any karmic lesson, the only question is, how difficult will the human collective make it upon yourselves before you complete this lesson and move on to the next, which will be much more beauteous. Hmm. To meditate with a tree, to breathe with a tree is as simple a task as just to walk into a forest or even to a small tree in a park or a sidewalk. Allow yourself to become very still. Allow everything else to leave your attention and be calmly one with this tree. It may feel awkward in the beginning. You may feel embarrassed if you're in a public place. You may wonder, how do I become one with a tree? Do I look at the leaves? Do I count the leaves? Do I observe the colors? It does not matter. For you will find with time just being with the tree, just being. The need to control the beingness, to say, oh, I'm observing the tree, I'm thinking of the tree, I'm singing to the tree. These are fine, and then they will drift away, they will not be necessary, and you will find that you and the tree find a resonance in your hearts. And... you will read more from the tree. It is similar to reading the body language or the aura of a person. When you try to control it, it becomes elusive, but when you relax and just be, it happens. When the tree opens its heart to you, you see great beauty, you feel, experience great beauty, kindness, wisdom, connectivity. And you may have visions or epiphanies or understandings. You may hear stories that are imparted into you in many different methods. You may see visions of other dimensions or frequencies or portals opening, visions going back through time or showing where there are others who are living where you are in this moment, but in a different element, a different essence or frequency. You may be surprised and come out that is okay for the next time you are less surprised than less. 
but to be one with the tree or to be one truly with a granite boulder, a cliff, a riverbed. It's a truly magnificent experience. It's time. Mm. Thank you for this. And we feel our lesson is complete for now. So we will depart and allow the conduit to speak with you. Blessings to each of you, our friends. We thank you for sharing this time with us. And we thank you. And blessings. Namaste. Blessings to one and to all.